Hello Internet, my name is Quinn and this is Blondie Hacks. Today we're going to make some plastic drawer clips. Wait, what? I don't know. Let's go. This is my shiny new to me Equipto industrial storage cabinet. It's about 400 pounds, built like a tank, and this was a uh, donation to the channel by viewer Glenn. So thanks again, Glenn. And uh, I absolutely love this thing. And uh, one of the nice features of it is that it has these paper labels that can uh, be slid into the drawers. So you can uh, label them all uh, however you like. Now, unfortunately, there's supposed to be a plastic cap on the end of each one that retains it. As you see on this side, they're all present. But on the other side, they're missing. And uh, they were there when, uh, when uh, Glenn donated the cabinet. So I think they were lost in transit. But uh, without them, these labels have quite a habit of sliding out of place. So what can we do about this? Now, I said that the caps on the right-hand side had all been lost. It's not quite true. By amazing stroke of luck, exactly one survived the uh, harrowing shipping journey. And uh, so we do have this guy. Now, it is broken, but uh, the pieces are both here. So the question is, can we replicate this part and make all new caps. Now this could be quite a challenge, as you can see. It's almost as though Equipto went out of their way to make this part as complicated as possible. So it seems like this could be a good candidate for 3D printing, but that would require replicating the part in CAD. And uh, because of the complexity of it, that would be a big challenge. And uh, all of these little nooks and crannies and tabs and things are necessary. It's all part of how it fits onto the end of those drawer handles. So uh, this would require a lot of very careful measurement and test prints over and over again, uh, probably a million 3D prints before I got it right. And uh, that just doesn't sound like very much fun to me. So we're going to try something else. Now you've seen me attempt this on this channel before, but it's time to try again. That's right. It's resin casting time. Now my last attempt at resin casting on this channel was not very successful, but that was a pretty complex part and it needed a split mold and, you know, there was a lot of uh, advanced resin casting techniques required that were beyond my skill levels with this technique. However, this guy, because it has one side that's completely flat all the way across, is actually a really good candidate because we can do it with a single part mold. Now, normally with a single part mold, you put whatever's going to be the flat surface up in the mold, and then you can just pour the resin in there and it self levels across the top, giving you your flat top, and then all of the details are underneath. However, that requires pouring the silicone over it or, you know, pushing the part into the silicone. And because of this shape in here and in here, we're going to get a lot of air bubbles if we try that. So we need to cast the silicone with it facing down, yet somehow end up with the mold with a flat top underneath. So here's how I propose to do that. I'm going to take this piece of aluminum here and machine the top of this as flat as I can possibly get it. And then I'll lap it as smooth as I can get it. And then that's going to allow me to place this guy on here. And if I do it right, I won't need any kind of sealant around here because this will be such a good interface. And then I can build up the sides and pour silicone in on top of this, let it cure, and then pull it out. And I'll have my flat top silicone mold. Now, the reason for not wanting to have any kind of sealant here, like I could seal this guy against the surface, but then when you flip the mold over, you know, whatever glue or whatever you use to attach this guy to the bottom of the mold is going to damage the mold when you remove it and it's going to, you know, mess up the shape. So you need the silicone to be right up against here. Uh, so this has to be basically like a silicone tight seal here, but without any kind of adhesive. So uh, that's where I'm going to leverage the power of machining and I'm going to see if I can get this interface to be high enough quality just with a mechanical surface to surface connection. Now my original thought was to actually just uh, hollow this out and make the entire silicone mold out of aluminum. Uh, but there's uh, two reasons I'm not going to do that. First, it's a lot of chips to remove. And secondly, it'll be much harder to get a perfectly flat hole at the bottom of a channel uh, as opposed to, you know, surfacing the top and being able to lap the top surface of this. So instead what I'm going to do is, you know, the more traditional method of silicone mold for forming where you have the bottom and then you just like hot glue pieces around here to hold the silicone while it cures. So the Equipto will be an agent of its own repair because it is going to supply the aluminum scraps that we're going to use to build up that mold. So I think maybe 
This guy, maybe this guy. Yeah, I think that might do it. What do you think? So if you're unfamiliar with silicone mold resin casting, uh, the first thing you have to make is the mold mold, which is, you know, the thing that's going to contain the silicone. And the key is that the mold mold, as it were, does not have to be pretty. It really doesn't matter what it looks like. All it has to do is contain silicone briefly. So uh, it's typical to just, you know, use some scraps, uh, you know, some melamine or wood or whatever you got lying around and just, uh, you know, hot glue that in there to make a decent uh, watertight container. Pour your silicone in there and once it cures, you just rip all this apart and the block of silicone is the object of the exercise. So before I can cast the original part, I need to repair it. So I'm using super glue to glue the two pieces back together. And I'm using CA activator here. If you've never used this stuff before, it's really cool. It's a spray that you put either on one side of the joint, you put glue on the other, or you can spray the joint after gluing. And it causes any cyanoacrylate based glues to cure instantly. So you don't have to wait for them. Very cool. This particular activator was a gift to the channel by 12V Tools. So thanks for that. And I'll put a link to them down there in the description. Now, once I had uh, glued the part back together, I realized it was now too tall for the aluminum scraps that I was going to use for the sides of my silicone mold. So instead, I uh, busted out this piece of uh, ABS plastic that I found on the junk pile. ABS plastic is a good material to use for this because the silicone uh, won't stick to it very well, and uh, the hot glue will stick to it just well enough to last for this uh, particular job. This stuff's uh, really easy to score and snap to get the pieces that you need. So I'm just building up uh, four little sides uh, for my aluminum block. So now we're ready to prepare the aluminum block. And as I said earlier, the goal here is to create a surface that's extremely flat and smooth such that I won't need to uh, seal the part up against it. A mechanical interface is gonna be good enough. So to do that, I'm gonna use the fly cutter because this is gonna be a, a really great way to get a, uh, as perfect a finish as I can get without surface grinding. Now, if you watch the video series where I made this fly cutter, then you know that I tried to make it a weight balanced design uh, so that it wouldn't vibrate. And uh, I tested it up to 800 RPM and it, uh, it worked really well. Well, uh, here I'm actually running it at 1400 RPM. And uh, I, I actually said in the fly cutter video that I would never run a fly cutter that fast. Well. Uh, this is aluminum, and, uh, and when I recorded that earlier video, I didn't think about aluminum. And in fact, you do want to run it quite fast. And I'm um, pleased to say even at 1400 RPM, uh, this thing ran smooth and uh, it produced a really incredible surface. Uh, it's actually got uh, a mirror sheen to it. You can see my hand in the reflection there. So uh, I was planning to uh, lap this in with some fine grit emery paper, but honestly, I'm not going to. I think the surface right off the fly cutter is, uh, is good enough. So next we bust out the hot glue gun and uh, attach the sides to uh, the aluminum block and uh, we also seal all the edges so that silicone can't escape and this is very standard practice for silicone mold making. Hot glue is a great choice because it uh, seals uh, watertight but uh, it doesn't hold all that well so as soon as you're done you can just rip it all apart and uh, get your silicone out. You don't want to uh, fully enclose the silicone with anything permanent because uh, Frequently, you have to tear the mold apart in order to get the silicone mold out of it uh, without damaging it. The next challenge is this screw hole here. And we don't want that in the part when it's being cast because it'll trap silicone. It'll completely capture the part and uh, it'll damage the mold when we try to pull it out. So I'm uh, plugging this up with some uh, modeling clay. This is actually uh, blue tack used for like hanging posters and stuff. Uh, and uh, this worked just fine for plugging up that hole. Next, we need to measure the volume uh, so we know how much silicone to mix up. And uh, uh, I actually did this in metric uh, because this is one of those areas where metric is a lot superior. Uh, it's very easy to convert from cubic centimeters to milliliters. It's straight across. So uh, I did that. And uh, then I just mixed up the two-part silicone mixture. I'm using the same Umu 30 that I used previously for the silicone mold. I'll link to that down in the description. Uh, I've had really good luck with this stuff. Uh, it mixes up very easily. And the instructions do recommend transferring the mix to a different container and then uh, mixing again just to be sure you don't have any unmixed stuff on the sides getting into your mold. And then we spray our mold with mold release so that we have some hope of getting the silicone out afterwards. 
and spray the part as well so that the silicone won't stick to it. And uh, then we pour the silicone in around the part and uh, I'm doing my best to hold the part in place with a stick and pouring, pouring the silicone in around it. And uh, when pouring silicone, you want to pour from high up so that you get a very thin, slow stream. And what that does is prevents bubbles. If you get any bubbles in the mix, they will pop as they travel down that very skinny stream of silicone. And 24 hours later, we can cut this mold apart and uh, see how we did. Now that mold is pretty stuck on there. And unfortunately I heard a crack when I did this and yeah, <laughs> the uh, part broke. It looks like uh, some silicone did sneak underneath my, uh, my part here despite my best efforts. So uh, I think what happened was uh, it moved a little bit when I was trying to hold it with the stick and that allowed silicone to get in underneath it. But it looks like it did the job anyway. So the mold needs a little bit of cleanup due to my little bit of leakage there of the silicone and I can very carefully pull all of the broken pieces out. It doesn't actually matter much that the original got broken uh, because we can uh, make more of them now. It did its job. It survived long enough to make the mold. We'll see if our clay trick worked and it looks like it did, so that's good news. And actually that mold turned out really, really well. I'm very happy with that. And cleaning up the mess with silicone is very satisfying. Now it's time for the resin. I'm using the same two-part epoxy resin that I used last time. I'll link to this down in the description as well. And uh, I tried to use these large containers to mix it and that was, uh, yeah, a really terrible idea because as you can see with these large containers, you just lose all of it sticking to the sides. So uh, yeah, I switched gears and I made myself some small containers here. And uh, I'm using a, uh, a four cup mixing system that's recommended by the instructions. You pour the two halves into their own separate cups and then you pour those into a third cup. You mix up that third cup and then you pour the result into a fourth cup and then you mix up the fourth cup again and then you use that to pour the final resin. And uh, that's supposed to uh, prevent any uh, uh, mismatch of the two halves that gets, you know, stuck to the sides or what, or what have you. Uh, so then some uh, mold release on the mold and then we pour this guy in here as well. And we pop the bubbles. Now I have not found a method for eliminating bubbles in the resin pouring itself, so I always end up with a bunch of bubbles. My understanding is that you can use a vacuum chamber to get rid of them, uh, but I don't have one of those. Uh, a good trick that the instructions suggest is blowing hot air over the top of, uh, of it before it sets, and that does get rid of a lot of the bubbles. For some reason, the leftover resin in the container always cures perfectly with no bubbles, but my parts always end up with bubbles in them. I don't know why that is. But moment of truth, let's see how we did. Pull the part out of the mold. And yeah, look at that. That actually looks excellent. I mean, aside from all the bubbles, of course, uh, the part actually looks really, really good. And uh, it cured extremely well, actually. This was the problem I had last time was I couldn't get it to cure very well. And uh, so I think that four cup mixing method really does help. So a quick test fit on the Equipto. And that looks like it's gonna be perfect. So. Very excited about this. So uh, now I need to make uh, seven more. It was gonna be six more, but I broke the originals. So it was immediately clear that I was gonna need to make another mold to double my production because doing these one at a time with a 24 hour cure is uh, glacially slow. So I used uh, the good part that I made and I mixed up another uh, mold and I also made it half the size this time because there's no point in <laughs> pouring a bunch of wasted silicone. And uh, you can see that I also rigged up a kind of a, a weighted uh, finger system, kind of like a welding finger to uh, hold that part in place. And uh, this worked perfectly. Uh, the mold came out really, really good, but uh, a crazy, crazy thing happened. This time, the, uh, the silicone stuck to the resin original like crazy. Like uh, I don't, I, it was so glued on there that I had to completely destroy the mold to, uh, to extract the part and I could not get 
all of the excess silicone uh, scraped off of it. I, I don't know what happened. I sprayed tons of mold release on everything, but I think because maybe the resin wasn't fully cured and the silicone and the resin just bonded together in this crazy way, I have no idea exactly what happened there. But basically my attempt to at double production was a complete loss. And uh, so I ended up just uh, pouring uh, eight brand new parts using the uh, single mold that I had because, uh, you know, my first casting was ruined and uh, the original was broken. But luckily I still had the mold so I could make eight more. It just took a really long time. So over the course of the next week, I made eight brand new clips and I uh, got kind of into a rhythm here and uh, they turned out pretty good. There was a couple of them that didn't cure very well. The the four cup method helped, but uh, honestly, I had a, a couple from the four cup method that still didn't cure, and I had a whole bunch that cured just fine using just two cups, so I don't know what's going on with the mixing of this resin, but uh, anyway, so I set up a jig to uh, drill the holes in all eight of them. Then I went to install the clips on the drawers, and it was not until this moment after all of this effort that I finally realized I don't understand how these clips work. When you install the label on the drawer, the label covers the mounting hole, but you have to remove the clip to install the label, so the order of operations doesn't make any sense. After studying it for a while, I finally figured out the way this works is that this, this little slot here on the clip is very precisely made, and they're different on the left and right side. And they're made so that uh, the plastic cover over the label will slide in from the right, and the paper will slide in from the left, but neither one of those things will slide out the slot on the opposite end. And uh, that's a pretty clever design, and uh, for that reason, resin casting turned out to be a really good way to do this, because this is probably the only method where you could get the level of precision and detail in the replicated parts to achieve that effect. So uh, you can see that on my parts, I do have some kind of spillover of the resin, so I had to clean that up with uh, uh, an X-Acto blade a little bit to get the precision slots to behave. But once I did that, it all went together perfectly, and uh, yeah, my, my new drawers are like brand new. So I've got all new clips down the right hand side. A uh, couple on the left are a little sketchy. I may uh, do the same process to make some new ones on the left as well. But overall, uh, despite all the uh, problems that I had, this project was a success. I learned a lot about resin casting. I'm slowly getting a little bit better at this process. And uh, I hope you learned something and enjoyed watching it. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.